What's up, ladies and gentlemen of YouTube? Boogie2988 coming at you live once again through the power of the internet. And today I want to talk to you a little bit about this thing on my face. This is Samsung's Gear VR. Now before I get started here, I want to say that this is not paid promo. I paid for this device out of pocket and I'm reviewing it just because I like the idea of it and I think it's kind of cool. I'm not getting paid anything to make this video. It's just because I like virtual reality and I want virtual reality to succeed. So I want to talk about this attempt at virtual reality. So this is the unit um, and it's basically very simple. It's a plastic housing uh, with the two lenses, uh, head straps here. There's a little uh, dial here that allows you to focus things. Once it's connected to your phone, which I'll show you how that connects in a second, there's a little uh, kind of almost scroll pad, mouse pad kind of thing here that allows you to navigate inside uh, the stuff. There's also a back button here, which may not be showing up because this is a white unit. Um, it's got a little grippy thing here on the back. You know, not grippy, but I mean cushioned to make it a little easier to use. And uh, simply the phone that you have will go onto the front of this thing and, and allow you to see a very closed up, zoomed version of the phone. And uh, that's, that's pretty much the basis of it. Now this unit works with the current generation of Samsung phones. This is my diet reminder, by the way. It's my unlock screen, just no cheeseburgers, no sodas. Um, but I slide the phone into here. I'm currently using a Note 5. Uh, connects to the USB port there, uh, then locks in, and then you're pretty much ready to use the unit. Uh, there's a little shield that you can put over this, but I never bother doing it. This currently works with the current generation of Samsung phones, at least this version of it does. I think there was one for the previous generation. That's the S6, the Edge, uh, the Edge Plus, and the Note 5. Uh, I've been told that the Note 5 and the Edge Plus look a ton better, so I presume that's the case. I don't really know. That's just something I've read. So once the unit's hooked up to your phone, you're able to basically peer into these, and they're close enough to your face uh, to where it pretty much looks like you're there. The way this technology works is it uses side-by-side -side 3D technology. So this is not obviously set up for the Rift right now. But if I were to look at this image through the Oculus Rift, what I would see is a 3D version of these two characters uh, because they're side-by-side -side and each image is offset a little bit to basically emulate the human eye. Now, one of the things I didn't realize until I was actually holding the unit is that this is actually made by the guys over there at Oculus for Samsung. And that's really surprising to me. It does work very, very similar to my dev kit too for the Oculus Rift. So I'm not very surprised, even though I, I, I'm led to believe that the, uh, the consumer version of the Oculus Rift is supposed to be very different. Once you get into the unit, there's an app store. So it's definitely a very closed environment. There's a lot of stuff you can do for free, like looking at Facebook 360 videos or downloading the Flickr app and looking at like different pictures and stuff like that. Uh, there's the Milk VR movie player, which has a lot of like streaming videos as well. But you can also download videos and pl play them there, including the, also the 3D gallery. The Netflix app is really cool because it's kind of like you're watching Netflix in some sort of living room. And there's also what they call the void screen, which allows you to, instead of having it, have it be like a level uh, replicated reality, you can instead just put the screen anywhere. You can lay on your back and watch Netflix. You can lay on your side and watch Netflix. You can do pretty much whatever you want. That stuff is really, really cool. I did not think I would want to use it. I did not think I would want to use it long term, but I've been watching some Netflix. I've been watching some movies uh, this way, and I've actually really, really enjoyed them, especially because they do allow you to see 3D films. Now, I, I was not able to find on the store any 3D films, but I was able to download some 3D stuff, and that was pretty badass too. Though, when you're watching 3D and Netflix and stuff, it's always on a little screen like this. You're not getting the 180 or 360 virtual reality experience. You're basically watching it on a screen inside that little subspace, but that's still really cool and convenient. I did not think ahead and get a gamepad for the device, so I did not have a controller laying around the house that was easy to pair to it, so I just basically didn't do it. Uh, instead, I played a handful of games that used the little uh, mouse thingy here on the side, and most of those games were okay. I mostly played free-to-play stuff, and they look really good, and they play fun. Uh, I mean, those games are a nice distraction, but just like all mobile games, there's nothing really deeply serious on here that I found, at least that nothing deeply serious that doesn't need a gamepad. All right, so let's start about the complaints. Uh, number one... When my wife used it, she got very, very motion sick. Now, a lot of other people have used this device using my phone in my home. Uh, some have used it for hours at a time. I've used it for hours at a time. We did not get motion sick. 
My wife does have a tendency to get motion sick whenever we drive or other types of things, so it's not surprising that she got a little dizzy and a little motion sick, and that kind of sucks because I really, really wish she could use this because she's shown a lot of interest in it. Secondly, even though this is using my phone with a very, very high-res screen on it, it is still possible for me to break the illusion and see the individual pixels, the red, the green, and the blue. And when that happens, it kind of sucks because I will even have to take off the unit for a little while and reorient and put it back on to get rid of that effect. And now it was a lot worse with my dev kit too, and it was about the same with Project Morpheus. So overall, I mean, that's just a, a problem with screens in VR units as it is right now. But for the most part, it, the illusion's definitely there. It, it's not super annoying. What is annoying, I'll tell you, is that a lot of the content that you can get access to is not very high resolution. Like when you're looking at photos, the photos look great. Uh, most of the photos will be very high res. When it comes to video though, the videos that, uh, the cameras that people are using are not that high resolution. And then they have to compress these files because they're very, very large files, five, six gigabyte files for 15, 20 minutes of data. And that's very frustrating because since they have to compress it so much, a lot of the times, it's impossible to get a lossless file. Then, the fact that these files are so big, but they're going onto my phone, that's extra annoying. Since our contract was up and they were giving us such a good deal on this phone anyway, I went ahead and splurged and got the 64 gig version. Uh, because it doesn't have expandable memory, you can't put an SD card in here for some crazy reason. It's a sealed unit. Uh, I've been downloading 180 degree and 360 degree virtual reality experiences to try and they've been fantastic, but they fill up the phone very, very quickly. Three, four, five, six, seven gigs at a time. Had I got the 32 gig phone, I would have been very, very frustrated because I'd only be able to load one or two movies at a time and still have uh, room for everything else. Fortunately, there's plenty of stuff that you can stream, but it does eat data like a hog. You definitely don't want to do it on 4G. You definitely want to connect your Wi-Fi, but then that's even problematic for a lot of people who are dealing with home data caps through their cable provider or internet provider. The other thing is that you want to keep these lenses as close to spotless as humanly possible. You definitely want to have lens cleaners at home, and you definitely want to be able to make sure that your screen is flawlessly clean because even the tiniest little speck of dirt or water will be magnified inside the unit. So you end up popping it out and cleaning it again and putting it back in and popping it out and cleaning it again. That's super frustrating as well. Obviously, that won't be a problem with the Oculus Rift because that's a sealed unit. But here, since you're using your phone, it's a pain in the ass. When I ordered this thing, I thought that I would probably use it a few times, make a video complaining about it, and be bored with it within a week. Well, it's been a week, and I'm certainly not that. I think between myself and my friends, we've used it a total of 20 or 30 hours easily. And that's it's hard to even find that kind of time. I love this thing. There's a ton of stuff to do in the store. Even though it's a sealed unit, not everybody can develop for it. you got to go through Samsung and, and, and through Oculus to get your app on the store. The apps that are there, a lot of them are free. A lot of them are fun to play with. And, I mean, it's pretty badass. The technology is good. Uh, the games are okay, at least the ones I've tried. The virtual reality experiences are fantastic. And overall, I'm really, really glad I picked this up. It's going to be good to tide me over until my Oculus Rift ships in, I think, May. Fucking May. Now, there's one more thing I have to talk about with this device, but make sure that the kids are out of the room before we talk about this, okay? And that is the adult experiences that are available for this device. Now, the very first thing you need to know is there is nothing adult-related on the Samsung store native to this device. You cannot access adult material unless you go really, really out of your way, and then most of it is behind a paywall. However... Once you do download that stuff, it is really, really, really interesting. Probably my favorite feature of the unit so far, though I'm watching a lot of Netflix too. I feel like a dirty, dirty old man when I say, wow, there's, there's not much else like it other than the real thing. And that's my first impressions of the uh, Gear VR. And I, I gotta say, as a VR experience, it's really, really good. Though I hope that the Rift turns out to be considerably better, uh, even though this is still very, very good. Let me know if you played with one of these units before, or do you have any interest in playing with one? Do you hate the idea behind it? Have you used another virtual reality device? Do you think virtual reality is stupid? Let me know in the comments section below, because I'd love to read your comments, as always. And as always, guys, thanks for watching. I love you very much.
and I'll speak with you again soon. Go on, shake it, girl. Show me what you're working with.